Shalom, Shalom. Welcome to um, Alpha Omega Clan Presents Meme Milk Monday, um, where we take um, a famous meme or a more popular meme that people use to try to discredit the Bible, and we kind of dissect that meme. And um, at, towards the end of the broadcast, we deliver um, the milk, um, the glass of milk of the day. So without further ado, I have um, Captain Malaak here, who has a couple of memes that he's going to dissect, a couple of memes that, that float around social media quite often. Con, con. So I'm going uh, to go over these two memes right quick. And um, it's two memes that, uh, you know, I've seen circling around for a couple of years, actually, a few years. And I've seen people from other um, schools of thought use it and use it as like some sort of real information. And I've seen a lot of um, brothers and sisters within the Israelite community actually be a little... Um, uh, a little baffled by it, like confused by it, you know, brothers and sisters that are um, unfortunately not too well versed in history. So it's easy for, for, you know, for a lot of people to fall for things like that. So this is what we call meme scholarship. So we're just going to go over these uh, two memes real quick. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I don't want Come on. Okay, so this is um, a very popular meme that I mentioned I've seen floating around for a few years over the internet. Facebook, Instagram, seen it on Google. <laughs> uh, so this is a, a comparison that's made between Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and the Egyptian deity named Horus. So you have a lot of people that go around and teach that the story of Yahweh Shai is... Um, fabrication and that actually it comes from the story of Horus the Egyptian deity so I'm just gonna go over some of the things that they say are similar I'm not sure if the words are clear so um, I'll go over it so it says story written down 2,000 years ago and on the right hand it says story written down 5,000 years ago okay it says says, Jesus, born of a virgin of the Virgin Mary. Horus, born of the Virgin Isis. Jesus, birthday celebrated December 25th. Horus, December 25th. North Star led wise men to him when he was born. On Horus, Eastern Star led three wise men to him when he was born. Jesus taken to Egypt to escape the wrath of Herod. Horus taken to Egypt to escape the wrath of Typhon. Jesus taught in the temple as a child. Temple as a child. Jesus baptized baptized by John at thirty. Horus baptized by Anu the baptizer at thirty. Had twelve disciples. Horus had twelve disciples. Performed miracles. Walked on water. Horus performed miracles. Walked on water. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Horus raised El Azurus from the dead. Jesus was transfigured on the mount. Horus was transfigured on the mount. Titles in uh, Jesus' titles include the way, the truth, the light, the Messiah, God's anointed son, son of man, the good shepherd, lamb of God, the word, morning star, the light of the world. He was crucified, buried in a tomb, and resurrected. Horus' titles include the way, the truth, the light, the Messiah. Same thing, same thing. It says he was crucified, buried in a tomb, and resurrected. 
mind you, you don't see any sources, any sources to prove anything within this meme to be true regarding Horus. And then we see regarding who the world calls Jesus, Yahweh Shai, there's even inaccuracies within his list because we know he was not born of a virgin, right? There was no um, virgin birth. And the scriptures do not say that he was born on December 25th, right? So even on his side, side uh, of this list here is um, some inaccuracies. So let's go through them. So this teaching, right, began by this man right here called Gerald Massey. You can look very easy to find. His name is Gerald Massey. So we read here, we see Gerald Massey was an English poet and writer on spiritualism and ancient Egypt. This is something you could look him up easily, Google, Wikipedia, whatever. On May 29th, 1828 in England, died October 29th, 1907 in London, United Kingdom. So that teaching began with this man right here, Gerald Massey. Moving on. So when you research the things that are written on that list that they try to say that the writings and the life story of Yahweh Shai being plagiarized from the story of who they call Horus, right? Guess what? You find none of that to be true. One, there's no primary record of Horus teaching in temples in any of the Egyptian um, papyri, any of the Egyptian tombs, none of the Egyptian walls speak not one time of Horus teaching in any temple. It doesn't exist. You can challenge any scholar. Well, guess what? R real scholars don't even teach that. First of all, it's pseudo scholars that teach that. No true scholar within the comedic realm, the ones who teach um, the history of written or oral history of Egypt, the Egyptologist, none of them teach that. None of them. It's only certain people within um, the so-called conscious community, you know, so-called conscious um, Facebook groups <laughs> that deal with, um, you know, teaching that our people come from Kemet, so on and so forth. They're the only ones who bring this false information out. So there's no primary record of Horus teaching in temples. It doesn't exist. Two. There's nobody named Anuk the Baptizer in the Egyptian pantheon of deities because they try to, you know, the comparison of Yahweh Shai being baptized by John. They say Horus was baptized by Anuk. Nowhere in Egyptian records is there a person or a deity called Anuk the Baptizer. It does not exist. It says Gerald Massey was the first to teach this. His writings are not held in high regard in the archaeological world. So even real scholars and real archaeologists do not hold Gerald Massey's writings into any sort of regard. There are some depictions of pharaohs being ritually washed when being crowned. But they are pictured being washed by the gods. This implies that the crown of the pharaohs was seen as a divine, as in Salak, as divine in nature, but there was no actual immersion. So you will see, you will see depictions of some pharaohs um, being washed with water by other uh, Egyptian deities while they're being crowned. But that does not signify baptism on the Egyptian walls. I'll read that again. There are some depictions of pharaohs being ritually washed when being crowned, but they are pictured being washed by the gods. So there was no baptism. They just on the wall being washed by whatever deity. So this implies that the crowning of the pharaohs was seen as divine in nature, but there was no actual 
physical water immersion. I'll read it again, but there was no actual physical water. Two, there is no Egyptian text that mentions Horus having 12 disciples because they say that he also had 12 disciples, but there's no Egyptian text disciples. Gerald Massey made this claim by looking at a wall that depicted 12 men, but Horus in other writings about Horus, there are indications of his four sons who followed him, or six semi-deities, but never 12. So the notion that he, that he had 12 disciples, and that's where the story of Yahweh having 12 disciples, it's, it's, it's gone. It doesn't exist. You're not, not going to on any um, Egypt. It doesn't exist. Also, in Egyptian myth, Horus is not mentioned walking on water. As for healing the sick, this notion of the Metternich Stella. Everybody can look up the Metternich Stella. So as far as him healing the sick, that notion and that teaching comes from Metternich Stella. It's a 4th century monument, which says that Seth poisoned Horus and was brought back to life by Thoth. The Egyptian in a belief that it will cure illness. Part of the spell involved running water on the monument and then washing the ill with the water that touched the monument. So what Egyptians used to do, right? With the Metternich Stella, they will run whenever there was some part of the spell to so-called um, cure the sick or the ill. They will run water over this Stella, over this stone um, carving. And the water that runs off of it, they will catch it in a bowl or a cup, and then they will use it to wash somebody, the, uh, the ill person, and they believed that that would make them whole again. It would take away their illness and sickness. So, but people take that and use it to say, say that, okay, you see, Horus healed the sick. No, it doesn't exist. It was Egyptians using this stella that they. <laughs> And they believe sick, but there's no writing within Egyptian papyrus or um, temple wall writings, so on and so forth, that shows that Horus healed anybody. Doesn't exist. So now, okay. It says, uh, we know Yahweh Shai raised Lazarus, right? So now, they try to say Lazarus comes from the, an Egyptian El Azur Us, which completely made up. It says Al Azur Us is a completely made up name, which was made to try to sound like it's the origin of the name Lazarus. The Azur is based off the name Asar, later translated into Osiris in the Greek. The L portion is a Semitic term that the Egyptians did not use in their language because you have to keep in mind the Hebrews, even, you know, the Canaanites and the Moabites used, they spoke a Semitic tongue and use a Semitic alphabet. The Egyptians used the Meruneta, which is a, um, a Hamitic writing system, right? So a Semitic term, a Semitic word for God, the Egyptians didn't use that word. So how could, you know, there be an Egyptian deity called El Azur Us? It wouldn't make any sense because El is not even an Egyptian word. So the portion El of that name, El Azur Us, is a Semitic term that Egyptians did not use in their language. Ancient Egyptians called their gods Netur, Netur, not El. It says, in Egyptian myth, Osiris was killed by Seth and then brought back to life by Oset, whose name was changed to Isis. She then laid with him and conceived Horus. So we see here that Horus was not born of any virgin birth because his father Osiris was killed by Seth. And then his mother Oset brought him back to life and then she laid with him and conceived Horus. That could be found within the Egyptian writings. So I don't understand how anybody came up with the notion that Horus had a virgin birth. 
but not even the Messiah. Yahweh had a virgin birth. So that's garbage. Okay, next. As far as people saying that the story of the transfiguration of Yahweh that we read about in the Bible was plagiarized from Horus being transfigured. No source exists that will show you that Horus was transfigured. You can look in the, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, any Egyptian papyri, any coffin text. It does not exist. It's all pseudo, pseudo scholarship. No source says, no source will tell you that Horus was transfigured in any way, shape, or form. Okay, now, no source, there's also, there's no source to prove the claims that he held all those titles listed. No source shows that he was crucified either. You got to keep in mind, crucifixion was invented by Persians from 300, anywhere around from 300 to 400 BC, used by the Romans. The Egyptians didn't use no crucifixion as a means of, of, of punishment, torture, or death. So, you know, uh, there was no, no way that Horus is depicted on, on you know, Egyptian walls as being crucified. It doesn't exist. So that meme completely garbage, completely inaccurate. It needs to be completely removed from the Internet, you know. But unfortunately, a lot of our people fall for it because, you know, too many times we don't bother to do even just a little bit of in-depth research. So memes like that sometimes, you know, have people put the Bible down, unfortunately. I'm going to move on to one more meme. This meme right here. So, shoot, never mind that already <laughs> the, the visage of this meme is, is wildly inaccurate. Yeah. I don't want you want to say something. La, la, I was just laughing at the meme. <laughs> the first thing I see is, um, of course, European Christ disciples and Virgin Mary. So right off the bat, that discredits the meme when you see that. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's bananas. All right. So now, hey, hey, I don't want to. If, if you don't, if you don't mind, when, when I go over these pictures right here, could you get it for me? Kind of one. Okay. Could you see them? Kind. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two, verse twenty-three. Okay. So the first part of this meme, you see, it says, "I created man and woman with original sin." <laughs> with original sin. Let's see if that's what the scriptures say. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha, chapter 2, and verse 23. And it reads For the Most High created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Right. So you see a quote in the scripture, the most high made man to be immortal. The most high created man to be righteous, but it's man that decided to grab hold, fall for the temptation of the spiritual adv adversary, the devil. And through that, taking heed to that, it brought death into the world. So the most high created man to be immortal. He did not create man with original sin. How could the Most High have created man and woman with original sin, you know, and when he first created them, he created them to be righteous. He created them to be immortal. He created them to be immortal, an image of his own eternity. How could he have created them with, with original sin if they had not sinned at the moment that they were created? It, it doesn't make sense. The second part. Okay, um, so, okay, then I, then I destroyed most of them for sinning, okay. So, then I impregnated a woman with myself as a, 
as her child so that I could be born. So it was a virgin birth and that who they call Jesus, Yahweh Shai, is God, which came down in the flesh, which is a Christian and Catholic um, teaching. So those two things we know to be wrong according to scripture. Could you get the next scripture from the other one? Con, this is the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 1. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no. Romans 1 and 3. three and one. I'm oh, oh, 3 and I, 1? I put, I put 3. I probably yeah, remember 1 and 3. I put 3 yeah, and 1. Con, one and three. Uh, the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, Hamashiach Yahweh our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Uh, that's one cut. He was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Come on, next scripture. Come. This is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 8. And it reads, remember that Jesus Christ, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to the gospel. There we go. Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, of the seed of David. It's cut number two. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. And it reads, I, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Yeah, out of his own mouth. I am the root and the offspring of David. So those are three, three simple scriptures which, which mention him being a descendant of the seed. Of, see here, Acts. Two, verse twenty-three. Down, down. Verse seventeen to thirty. So, three, four, five, six scriptures that get to the point. And there's a few, but to to have. So, this kills the whole notion that uh, he impregnated. Himself with, I mean, this woman, Mary, with himself. There's no virgin birth. So now it portrays the teaching that um that he is God come down in the flesh, as uh, the Christian Church teaches. You got that other one? Come, come. You want that in Matthew? Um, oh, John, John 14. Okay, John. This is the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 24. And it reads, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Uh, verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If he loved me, he would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Boom, well, see that? So, verse 24 and verse 28 in the book of John, and let's see, you know out of his own mouth that it was the Most High that sent him. Then in verse 28, he said, I go to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. He makes a separation, he makes a distinction. Nowhere within the scripture does anyone or does Yahweh himself say or teach that he is the creator himself. Yahweh mm -hmm. always speaks as him being the son of the Most High and being sent to do the will of the Most High. Okay. And I went to, within scripture, Yahweh lets you know that he speaks no words of his own, came to bring in no new commandment, but only that of the Most High, his Father. So here he is within John, you know, on chapter 14. It makes it a clear distinction. Can you get the next one from the other one? Come on. 
time. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 3, and verse 16. And Jesus, Yahweh Shai, when he was baptized, went straight, went up straight, straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the spirit of the most high descending like a dove and, and lighting upon him. Verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. See that? This is when um Yahweh was being baptized by John, then the heavens opened up, the spirit descended. And this the voice of the most high spoke and said, Look, look at what it said. It said, And lo, a voice from the heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased to hear within scripture. We have the voice of the most high saying, This is my beloved son. Didn't say this is me. I made myself come down so I can wake you up and bring you. But no, he said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. There goes the separation between the two. Come. Let me know when you got this, Luke. I don't want come. I got it. This is the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 69. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of the, of the Most High. Even when he went back into the spiritual world, it says he said the Son of Man. What he sits on the right hand of the power of God. He sits at the right hand of the Most High. Didn't say the Most High split himself into two, and then when he died on the cross, the spirit went back up, and then they fused back together into one. <laughs> the, the Bible doesn't teach that. You know, okay. the same um, um, Dragon Ball Z fusion, you know, you don't read that in the, in the Bible. This is the son of the most high. Uh, OK, so the last part of the meme we see, it says later, I will kill myself. OK, as a sacrifice to save all of you from the sin that I gave you in the first place. So the most high gave man sin. We read in Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 23 that that wasn't the case. But this meme insinuates that it's the most high that made man to sin. So when you got James out of one. Time. This is the book of James, chapter one, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. For the most high cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Right. So that's the cut. You can't no nobody can say, you know, the most high gave the most high gave man sin. You know, that was man of, of his own conscience when he chose to grab hold of the left hand side, you know, pursuant to his uh pursuant to wisdom of Solomon chapter two and twenty-three, right? So of course, even you know, when you read in Genesis, Adam and Eve, we, we we know how that whole thing went down. We have it right there within Genesis. Then it's reiterated here in Wisdom of Solomon chapter two. So you know, so let no man say that he is, when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high, for he cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he. And so that kills that notion, that kills that portion of the meme. So uh, I just wanted to touch on these two memes real quick, because these are two memes that have been floating around for a little while, you know, and I see that it's confused couple brothers and sisters so you know just want brothers and sisters to do a little more in-depth research man get into them scriptures get into some history so you'll be able to you know combat these these um these pictures these uh this meme scholarship okay. and you know so, the interesting, gonna, um, thing, the interesting thing of, oh, man. kind of the one listen okay let's get this Oh, no, I was saying the interesting thing about memes, as we all know, is that they can be like pamphlets. You know, sometimes when you pass someone a pamphlet or a piece of literature, you know, it has nothing in depth, but it has key points. Right. And so right. that can be, you know, those things can be for good. You know, you just pass people information, you know, to get it to to engage them and get them to go do further research. But now these memes have you know, crushed a lot of brothers and sisters because, you know, we, we know that Israel can sometimes be short, you know, have a short attention span. 
and they don't want to do the necessary footwork to go and actually do in-depth research to see that the things that are on this meme are actually correct. They're going to see it, take it for face value, and then whatever the opinion they form based off of it, that's what they're going to roll with, you know? So, you know, it's beautiful that, um, you know, we have brothers in Israel, you know, that, that, that study these things in depth so that, you know, we can break them down and then present it to the people. So um, what we about to do right now is we about to end it off with some milk. Um, Malak, if you could just get John 7 and 16 and hold it for me. Um, so one thing that we hear a lot um, and that's highly debated, um, you know, people say that Christ has a doctrine, right? Christ has commandments. Um, that Christ, um, you know, we always say you got to learn to, re to come, reconcile. Give me a second. Right. Come, come. We always say you have to learn to reconcile the writings of Paul and Christ. But you also have to understand that Christ didn't come to do his own will. And so um, a lot of people actually believe that, you know, we have people that teach uh, not only are the laws of God done away with, but also that Christ has his own doctrine. And so what we're about to do is we're about to get it out of, out of, you know, Christ's mouth, what he said concerning doctrine. And we're going to go through the scriptures, precept upon precept and break that down. Okay. So the first verse, um, if you can, my lot, give for me John chapter seven and verse 16. Doctrine for dummies. What is doctrine? Let's deal with it. Because again, a lot of brothers are teaching that Christ had his own doctrine. But let's see what Yahweh Shai said. Okay. This is the book of St. John. I mean, I'm you said beginning at 16? Yeah, 7 and 16. Kind of. Kind of. It reads. Yahweh Shai had answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me, right? So let's deal with doctrine because we hear this a lot. You know, oh, what doctrine is that? What doctrine is that? We hear it a lot. That's false doctrine. Let's deal with what the scripture says doctrine is. Um, I don't want to can you go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Proverbs chapter four and verse two to deal with what doctrine is. Okay. This is the book of Proverbs chapter four and verse two, and it reads, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. The doctrine is the law, right? Christ didn't come with his own doctrine. John 7 and 16 says, Yahweh Shai answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Out of one. Um, John 8 and 26 for me. Uh, you're going to read to 29. My doctrine is not mine, but him who sent me. Doctrine is the this, law. Now let's see who sent Yahweh Shai. Yeah. This is the book of St. John, chapter 7 and uh that was chapter seven. No, chapter eight verse chapter chap, no, chap, chapter eight verse eight, eight, yeah. Chapter eight and verse twenty six. And it reads Come. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Next verse. They understood not that he spake to them of the father. The father, the heavenly father, right? Next verse. Then said Yahweh Shai unto them, when ye have lifted up the son of man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things. Nothing of myself, doctrine included, 
okay? Reconcile the two, nothing of myself. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but him who sent me. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. I do those things that please him because he understood that the mission is not his, but the Father's. He came to do the will of the Father, right? Um, go back to John chapter 7 and read verse 17 out of one. John. This is the book of John, chapter 7, and verse 17, and it reads, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of the Most High or whether I speak of myself. If any man will do the will, what is the will? Remember, this is, this is we're just going back to the milk. What is the will of the Father? Psalms 40 and 8. John. Again, Christ did not come with his own doctrine. We must stop teaching that. That is a heresy. Christ didn't come with his own doctrine. And here's the funny thing. When we understand that Christ didn't come with his own doctrine, that kills a lot of teachings. OK. Because I often hear I'm, I'm going to come up veer a little bit one thing that i hear a lot is is when brothers bring out christ saying i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel then all of a sudden you get people tap dancing and saying yeah 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 but those before paul those before paul and then but it's like no no the servant isn't above the master man you know we got to understand that servant is not above the master paul isn't above christ and christ isn't above the most high all right read it when you got it king Con, this is the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 40 and verse 8, Con. Con. And it reads, I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, yeah, thy law is within my heart. Back to the law. Thy law is within thy heart. Right? So now, let's end it with the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38 and 39. Because we got to understand something. One of the fundamental differences between the Mosaic law and faith, you know, um, the grace that we were given from Yahweh Shah, right? Here's the difference. Whenever you're ready, Ken. Ken, what, um, what chapter was that? Uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 38 and 39. Verse 38 and verse 39. Okay, this is the book of Acts chapter 13, verse verse 38 and verse 39 and it reads be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins and by him all that believe are justified from all things which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses right so through this man Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus through this man is preached forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things which he cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Because guess what? Under the Mosaic law, if a brother or sister, um, like if a brother was a homosexual, right? He would be put to death under the Mosaic law. Someone that commits adultery under the Mosaic law, they're put to death. There are certain sins under the Mosaic law that there was no sacrifice for. So therefore, you couldn't be forgiven of them. It meant automatic death. But through Yahweh Shai, he brought, he brought grace. And so you can be forgiven for things that you couldn't be forgiven for under the Mosaic law. He's preaching repentance, as we all should be preaching. Repentance. So um, with that said, um, Unless Malak has anything that's going to conclude um, Mean Milk Monday. Um, until next time, um, brothers and sisters, remember, man, don't allow meme scholarship to alter your walk and to have you second guessing um, something that the scriptures can easily clear up and a little bit of research can easily clear up. Okay. 
don't be robbed of your reward based off of a silly meme that um, brothers who lack scholarship present, you know, and float around social media. Con, con, you know, us, if, if especially brothers that are awakened by the most high and, and that want to be teachers and teach, you know, our people, we have the obligation, the obligation, we have the duty to be as learned and as well informed as we possibly can. It's our duty. We can't be lazy with research. We can't be lazy with studying because then we will you'll never reach the full potential, you know, of, of, of being a teacher, you know, that we possibly can. Because if we're going to teach our brothers and sisters and, and help awaken the minds of our, of our people, then we need to make sure, you know, we know exactly what we're talking about. Because you may have some yeah. people that may have some questions that may be a little too difficult. Now, what are you going to do? So it's definitely, definitely um, a vital part of this walk is to make sure you know, yeah, brothers yeah. and sisters are, are well in tune with their study habits. Okay. Okay. And yeah, you know, with that, um, you know, we're going to say Shalom. Brothers and sisters, have a good night. Stay in the spirit. All right. Shalom.